Having credit can literally mean you live somewhere or not. I are the one, and they are the two. What? Welcome to the Busters Podcast, where the vice is real and the reasoning is raw. I am your host, Dale Elliott. Respect for the love, people. Me did ask you know, if you send me some topics you know, what I talk about. And today, me am going to talk about building credit and finances in the US as an immigrant. Especially if you just move here, which I think is probably the hardest. So please, you know, subscribe and like the video. Remember, when you subscribe and like the video, more people see it, may end up get more views. It's very helpful and it's free. So just do it. I will share my journey. My journey of building credit really started before I officially moved to the US because you really just need to ask certain questions when you are here. So before I moved here, I used to always come and spend time in Florida with my father and I always wanted a bank account. So and he would say, oh, you don't have any papers that you cannot get a bank account that is wrong so we are going to dismiss that out of it you can get a bank account in the united states as long as you have a valid id passport preferably so the bank which i realized that could um let me open a bank account was bank of america and um nobody never believed me you know i looked it up on google uh, went into Bank of America, uh, deposited $25, and that is basically my uh, first bank account in the US. And while I was coming back and forth in Jamaica, I used to, you know, put money in there. And I did like it because it's, with a Bank of America account, you can use it in Jamaica at the Scotia Bank. So while I was in college, I used to. Like if my father was sending me money to Jamaica, if I asked him for any money, he would just sell me the money to the Bank of America. And so that did make things a lot easier for me. So if you have any parent abroad and you're still living in Jamaica and you're spending time in the US, just go and open a bank account and set up a Zelle. Because if you open a bank account and set up a Zelle, you'll be able to receive money and you can just go and withdraw it from the Scotia Bank. You won't have to ever stand up in no line at Western Union or MoneyGram and they won't take your money when you get it straight directly to the Bank of America. You can just go to the Scotia Bank and you can withdraw all the money. So that was before I moved here. And then when I officially moved there, um, you know, I came in and I um, I was provided with a social security. So I went to Bank of America and I updated updated the social security. And I find a lot of immigrants go through the same problem, which is the start out. Now, when you come here and you are given that number, under no circumstances should you share that number with anybody that you do not trust wholeheartedly because that is now your number in the u.s your social security number that is your number and people can use that number to steal their identity people can use that number to take out loans in your name credit cards in your name people can literally destroy your future by getting that number that is presented to you when you arrive here or whenever you um sort out your situation and you know is a documented person here you will receive that number now when you have that number when you get it at a certain age you are going to run into a bump in which you are going to need to establish credit and credit history and i think that is probably one of the most annoying phases of moving because one you cannot move anywhere on your own because you don't have any credit to, to, to attach yourself to a lease. So there is have something that is called an, an insufficient credit history in which you cannot 
get an apartment on your own because you don't have any credit history. So that is how important credit is. Having credit can literally mean you live somewhere or not. So when you run into that bump, the first thing you need to do is start to establish some credit. You go to the bank, preferably any bank gives you credit card, but I was fortunate enough, so I went to Bank of America. And there is two options how to start establishing credit. Um, I didn't do the second option, but the first option is you go, you present them with your social security number, and they're going to ask you income, work history, and if you don't have any, still have to fill it out. What I found out is that they are not, they are literally checking just what you tell them. It is not necessarily fact check. So you won't necessarily have to provide no IRS returns and you won't have to provide anything to them other than what you say to them, that is what they will use. Now you take that however you want to take it. But when you go in and they ask you, they're going to ask you how much money you make for the year, what is your employment history. Um, so you can say you're unemployed, you can say that you're a student, you can say you are looking for a job, you can say you have a job, but as long as you tell them something and then they're going to ask for your gross income and they're going to ask for your monthly expenses. Chances are you recently moved here or you're just going to give them a, a good estimate of things that, you know, how much you make for the year, you know, but and if it's your first year, you know, you can start off, tell them you make like 40, 45,000 for the year and then you apply. They're going to run your credit. No, no established credit is better than bad credit. So it is better to have young credit than have bad credit. So after you run your credit, you're going to tell you if you get it or if you don't get it. From what I realize, if you run it and you get it, they are going to let you know that you're, you are accepted right away. It is almost instant. Now, if they tell you to, to um, check online and you will receive a decision, nine times out of ten, that means you have been denied. So the first time I applied for a credit card, fortunately enough, I got it because I had a bank account prior. I had a bank account two years prior to me moving fully to the States. So I had some sort of history and uh, my first um, credit card, Bank of America credit card, and the limit was $500. And funny enough, I did everything with that credit card. Now, what you guys need to know is that credit card is not free money. It is not free money. You need to be financially literate and financially responsible because a credit card is a big responsibility here. My first credit card was $500. I got a travel credit card because I was still back and forth from Jamaica to the US and it awarded me a lot of benefits in which there was no international transaction fee and when I was buying stuff in Jamaica like food and day-to-day -day expenses I used to just always use that credit card because it used to give me the direct exchange rate so I didn't have to spend no extra money. It was actually easier for me. The second way in which you can get a credit card is by getting a secured credit card, which is you come and you put down a certain amount of money. Say you come and you say, I have $300. And then they're going to give you a $300 credit line. But all you need to do is constantly use this credit card to develop the history. Now, what happened to me is that when I first got the $500 credit card, I was using it and my credit score went up. But what you are not told is that a good credit score is not necessarily 
amazing if it hasn't been established over a period of time. So what you will realize is that you can have a 720 credit score, but you only have credit history for a year. A lender is not really going to prioritize your application because they don't necessarily see where you have maintained a certain amount of financial responsibility over a long period of time which is i think is fear and kind of unfair because it puts you in a spot where if you just move here even if you have the cash you are going to you are going to want to get a car and a place to live and credit and you are it is very hard to get all of that on a fresh social so you have to start in increments so i would acknowledge you know you get the credit card whether secured or not secured but i tried bank of america and i got it i applied for a credit card from wells fargo and i got denied the first time i got denied and so i just had my one bank of america credit card and then I was looking for somewhere to live. Now, when looking for somewhere to live, that is very hard. I ran my credit twice. And then there is two different kind of inquiries. There's a hard inquiry and a soft inquiry. I ran my credit twice to get a apartment to live in. And I ran a hard inquiry twice. I got denied both times and the issue will, the issue was insufficient credit history because you know i'd never had my um i never had established credit they don't they haven't seen me with an address my name has never been on a lease here so when you just move here you are going to find it very hard to to find a place to live unless you know a specific landlord deliberately and then he decides to put you through so how I got around that, I had to go and I got a roommate. So both of us was on the lease in which it sort of gave the, the, the landlord that I was applying to um, more cushion now that he realized that it's both persons on the lease. So the moment you get an address in America, this place has, this place likes to lend people money because this is a country built on debt so what you will realize is that the moment you get a social and an address you're going to start receiving tons of mails tons of mails offering your credit cards offering your furniture to buy things um 10 here 15 there you're going to receive cable companies spectrum at and they're going to bum rush you because it's like you are seen as fresh meat to to a new american like creditors you are literally seen as fresh meat and then this is where a lot of people fall to the wayside because you realize that there is so much things you can get in your possession without paying out fully to to get it because my first car in jamaica i had to, every car i owned in jamaica i had to buy it cash the phone that I owned in Jamaica, I had to buy cash. Here, you don't have to. And chances are you, it is very hard to buy a cash, to buy a car cash here because it's a lot of money and you know that you don't want necessarily do that. So you're going to start receiving a lot of mails. So the first, I was receiving mails, you know, about, um, you know, credit offers and second credit card i got and it was a capital one credit card for 750 dollars so now i have two credit cards and how i used credit cards is you i only spend what i know i am willing to pay some people say you should try to keep the amount less than 10 percent but i say try to pay it as you go and anything that gives you the opportunity to use a credit card you do it and pay it off because a lot of credit cards award you certain benefits of points and these points can be redeemed for travel to pay off some of those same credit cards you can have some of these points 
stored away in case of a rainy day where you can redeem them for cash or even use some of these points to pay off some of those debts that you have. You're going to have to go and get a phone and the phone companies here, they trick you because you will go and the phone company would be like, oh, if you turn in your phone, you get $700 or $800 off the, uh, off the phone, the next phone, like the newest iPhone. And when you go and do that, you realize that if you read the fine print, the $700 is not necessarily. So if the phone costs $1,000, you're not going to owe $300 on the phone when you turn in your phone. What they're going to do is they're going to prorate that $700 throughout your bill. So say for instance, you get the new iPhone and after a year, you're like, oh, well, I turned in my old one, so that is $700, and the new one is $1,000, so I really only owe $300. No, they're going to be taking that $700 that they promised you in increments. Like, say they take it every $35, every $45. So it will take longer, and they're going to add that with your bill, so you might find that your phone bill is like $100 a month but only $30 out of that is coming from the $700. So you are literally contracted and you're stuck with them. So if you can avoid getting a phone and a plan, I would ask you, I would acknowledge you to do so. Um, all these networks are the same. Metro, Boost, AT&T, Verizon. If you're just coming here and you don't necessarily want to indulge in those big networks as yet i suggest you just go to like a boost mobile or a metro pcs and buy a metro chip don't watch no face bill your bill you get to to where you want so while you are trying to pay off the credit cards on time you are going to notice a lot of of you're going to receive you're going to be receiving mail every week with new stuff especially if they realize that you have moved in a new apartment you're going to receive stuff from like ashley furniture um lures any bed bath and beyond they're going to all sending your things in the mail and they offer finances as well now i wouldn't acknowledge i wouldn't tell anybody to to credit furniture there's a lot of things that i would advise people to take out on credit but i wouldn't tell anybody to credit furniture unless you have the money to purchase the furniture and is going to credit the furniture and then pay it off instantly because you don't necessarily want to clog your credit to where you have a bunch of like petty things on your credit or a bunch of inquiries in a year because they look at that as like a red flag you don't want to run your credit all the time and that is a mistake a lot of people make when you move to the u.s you start to run your credit every like every chance you get you run your credit for example say the first month you get the credit card try not to get another credit card in that month if you move somewhere Try not to go, if you run your credit in January, try to wait until like February or March to run it again. You don't want to necessarily stuff your credit history with a lot of inquiries in a short piece of time. Try to stretch it out. So now we acknowledge the credit and somewhere to live. So all the issue you got to fix somewhere to live is nine times out of ten you're going to have to get a roommate and if you have any ambition at all or you want better for yourself eventually within a, after a year of living somewhere and you have showed that you have you have paid the lease with no late payments you have no late payments on your credit cards no, you have defaulted on anything you now are free to go and live wherever you want to live depending on your credit score when i say that i mean after you've established rent history, your credit score will play a part in you living somewhere, but it depends on the cost of the place and your income. Now, you can live in a super nice neighborhood, but 
you have to have a certain amount of like income and credit score to like live there but it will get easier for you to live somewhere as long as you consistently pay your credit cards and pay your rent every month now this is not jamaica where we can owe the landlord you miss your month you miss a month you're going to have to pay a late fee and then if following month come you're going to get evicted you see the letter under your door and you got to go now you do not want to have an eviction on your credit history and you do not want to have anything derogatory so for instance missing a credit card payment and you're gone two three months and you haven't been paying it and one that is going to accrue interest and credit card interests can range from 17 to 30 percent so you have to every time you get in a credit card they are going to give you you're going to receive a piece of paper with a lot of information on it and a lot of people don't necessarily read it but i implore you although you're looking at the benefits of having the credit card because you will see it outlined the interest which is the apr it is going to be small and up the top and it's going to show whether it's going to be 18 percent 20 percent no i am not a good mathematician but if i am applying for a loan and i am seeing that the interest rate on that loan is 20 percent it is not rocket science to know that that is a lot of interest so i will implore you if you have a credit card stop letting your interest goes up not because you see minimum payment which is normally like 25 or 40 dollars i implore you to try to pay as much as possible because you paying your minimum payment they will add interest to the amount so you're still sinking yourself in a hole that is deep and it is very hard to fix your credit so it is better to not get it to that situation first in the first place so while on the journey of building credit i ended up my third credit card i got a apple credit card and the reason why i got the apple credit card is because as you know i make videos so i need a phone an iphone which made good videos and it was in the middle of the pandemic phone did crack couldn't see anything on the screen so i applied for the upper credit card because i didn't want to spend like 1200 dollars all at once so what i did was i applied for an upper credit card and i got approved and my limit was i think two thousand dollars that was the highest at the time the limit was two thousand dollars now i could have what helped me now that i have done that I bought the phone and then I had like one or two years worth of 0% APR as long as I pay it off within the specific time I would pay no interest. So I finished paying it off before the year and you know established some enough credit history until the credit cards are literally going to start rolling in and when I say rolling in trust me they roll in no i like to be on top of my finances regardless of the amount of money i have i try to spread it no a lot of people like to keep one bank account i personally like to have multiple so when i say multiple any bank that allows me to open a bank account there even if it's it's just fifty dollars i like to do that so i would encourage somebody to have more than one bank account there's a lot of banks here so there's bank of america there's wells fargo there's chase there is Citibank, there is um u.s bank there's the, the navy bank there's bank america has a lot of banks so Citibank, i would acknowledge you to go and try to have accounts there that way you can separate your funds and have history with these banks 
just in case you're ready to get a credit card. So the third credit card I was awarded was a, I think a Chase credit card. And this credit card I was using a lot. It was a $2,000 credit card and I really was like neglecting the others because I use credit card based on the perks. So the Bank of America was for travel and I had it. And the $500 limit, I wanted more and I wasn't given that limit. They, I wasn't given a, a limit increase because you can actually call them. If you are not awarded a limit increase, you can call them and explain to them that, listen to me, um, I think I need more. I've been paying off my credit cards for like six months, always have the balance low. And right now I'm trying to, I am spending more and I want to have benefits when I spend that amount of money, so I need more money. And sometimes they might listen and give it to you, sometimes they might deny you. And from what I realize, if they're going to accept you, they're going to accept you right away. And if they're going to deny you, they're going to tell you to wait for get for wait for acceptance. So don't believe that you have to wait for them to increase your credit line. You can call and you can find out on your own. So I received a Chase credit card. And this was my highest credit card, but I was booking flights. I was using this credit card. Now, I never have cash on me because I always use my credit card. And what I always try to do, I always try to pay them off on time. So if you have the money for something in your pocket and it's $80 and it's right there for $80, use the credit card and then go on your phone with online banking and pay the $80. Because trust me, it is worth it. $80 is 80 points that can add towards a flight, that can add towards a rainy day, that shows the different, different banking agencies that you are responsible. So after having the Chase credit card, one day I realized that it just jumped. The credit limit just like go way up. I mean, I say, how oh, that happened? And it turned out because just because I was using it enough, it carried up my credit history. So the big issue now, the big deal. Now I'm gone like a year and a half of credit. You know, I have three or four credit cards at the time. I have the Apple, Capital One, Wells Fargo, Bank of America. And now I want a vehicle. So, you know, shopping around, shopping around, still have a low credit history. So it's very hard to get a car with a credit history because what they normally do, they normally require a large down payment. But remember, you can negotiate with the car dealer. And no, this probably only works for me, not necessarily for you, because sometimes I believe you have to put your hat where you can't reach it or put your hat where you want it to go. When I was thinking about getting a credit card, when I was thinking about getting a car, um, people was like, oh yeah, try and get a Toyota or a Mercedes or, you know, don't go to a buyer and pay here. Don't do that. Go and get a brand new car. A car that will be reliable, a car that is, chances are, under five years old don't buy a car older than five years old for your first car because you're going to feel it financially because mechanics aren't cheap my father is a mechanic so i am telling you do not if you have if you just move here do not try to go the cheaper route all the time because the cheapest route in america is the most expensive route because you can go and buy a car right now that is like 2010 and if something is wrong with the engine, that is like a $4,000 engine or, or a $3,000 engine. That is literally a down payment on like the newest Honda if you have good credit. So I personally negotiated with my um, car dealer. So what I did, I used to, the cars that I want, I used to go to the car mart and walk around like 
like like i am going to buy the car when i never really had the money or the the um the down payment to even get it but i like to find out you know where 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 me what we can really afford so i went to mercedes and i um i liked a c300 and i was like okay if i have this car i am going to like that i have this car so i am going to be more in, in inclined to pay it and i went to honda and honda had like the 2020 honda civic the payments was like four hundred dollars and i went over to mercedes and the first time i ran my credit at mercedes they came over and they were like oh yes your credit history is young so what we would like to do is you have to put nine thousand dollars down and your payment is going to be some crazy number like 600 and not even like 700 and something per month so i was like no but what i did i found out that when they run your credit you can now take that piece of paper and go and present it to honda so what i did i said listen to me i just went to honda honda is telling me all i need to do is put down four thousand and my payment is gonna be four hundred dollars so can i have that piece of paper and i'm going to take it over to honda so he was like oh let me see what i can do and he went and he tried and he tried and he him fit that let him do all kind of things to get down the payment to the amount when we feel like all right then we can manage that and the reason why i say this is because a lot of people go and they get a car that is like 200 dollars cheaper than the car that they actually want and then they are miserable they are miserable they might still struggle to pay it and they will be very annoyed because the, hurt, the most hurtful thing is to pull up to a stoplight and the car that you want come beside the car that you're in and you are still paying a certain amount of money and for like $200 more, which is literally, if you, if you go out every week, that is just, just less drinks. If you buy fast food every week, start cooking. There are ways to try see what you can cut back on when i got my first mercedes what i cut back on was fast food i realized that okay then in order to make up this extra money i now have to cook more i now have to stop going out often i had to cut back on certain financial things that were bringing bringing my money down in order for me to pay that because I feel better I am happier in that and then sometimes your presentation is important so if you look a certain way carry yourself a certain way I personally believe that money will come when you do that so I managed to get my first car now if you want any car that you want try to go and get that one as long as it is in your means or you have already came up with a plan about how you are going to afford the car that you want because the first car that i got i couldn't necessarily i couldn't buy it cash i don't listen to that them those people oh don't buy anything if you can't buy two time garbage nonsense no that is the good thing about credit in America and building it. When you build it, it gives you an opportunity to, to have things that you couldn't necessarily buy at once. So when you get the when you get a car, the first thing that is going to happen is you are going to receive another batch of mails. You're going to receive mails telling you, oh, they can refinance, they can get your payment down to this amount and don't rush in, in that. The first letter you get in the mail to refinance, don't necessarily rush into it. Wait, try to be paying that car for at least a year and then you start looking at refinance options to get your payment down because if it's a car that you're going to keep, 
you can refinance it in the long run that's why i say it's better you get a new car and then when you get a new car the car comes with a warranty don't let them try to get you to pay an extended warranty if if you are within those years and those miles that they offer the factory warranty for it, don't pay for an extended warranty because you can go and get it afterwards and if you don't plan to own the car for a long period of time just don't pay it at all now that is how a lot of people that move here get caught up because they try to sell you a lot of extra things so don't let them bump up your loan and you will realize that the down payment whatever you see on the sticker that is not what the actual payment is going to be because every state has a certain amount of taxes so say for instance in LA the car is $30,000 a $30,000 car in LA you're going to have to calculate 9% of that $30,000 and then with that 9%, they're going to also have registration. And then you're going to have to go and get insurance. And insurance is a monthly bill as well. So a lot of America is, there are a lot of bills here. A lot of bills here. So you have to be very cognizant of the choices you make and which bill you decide to take on that is why i always implore people about like subscriptions if you know somebody share a netflix you know share a hulu don't get cable it don't make any sense use the internet use things that are vital so that is how you necessarily maneuver your credit now where when your credit is actually start building now things start to necessarily get get like better so for instance this is an old one but you are going to start receiving the good credit cards now like the american express and then now this is the great one the, the um the, the platinum card the platinum american express now these are cards that i have but it took me a it took me a period of time to get there now in the mail as usual i say you are going to receive a lot of cable you know um new credit card banks are offer your credit card so i would necessarily take them don't overwhelm yourself with credit cards in america because you especially if you're using like one credit card after a while you're going to like lose track and like you will forget that oh you have this money and that one and, and this and that so it kind of it, it is kind of distracting this credit thing in america and another trap that i don't want you to fall under is clothes when i say clothes i'm talking about like departmental store credit cards don't get those now these are mistakes that i have made don't get those if you are not necessarily going to use them because you cannot use them for nothing else so you say you go to macy's and macy's is offering you a credit card don't take a macy's credit card that don't necessarily like you are going to only use it at macy's so you don't necessarily need that so don't fall into that trap um now if you do what i do there are certain credit cards that might be useful to you and one of those is like say when i was starting up my podcast i was being offered a um a best buy credit card i didn't take it but a best buy credit card would be something that i might need because i am purchasing a lot of equipment you know because i'm trying to get the podcast better and better subscribe subscribe now like the video and comment yes so yeah i need a credit card and then look for the credit cards that offer 100 per, like that offer zero percent apr for one year because it will never be zero percent apr forever but if you have zero percent apr for the first 12 months now if you are in a financial jam you can use that credit card because you have a year before you can completely pay it off before they start adding the interest on it so i always think that is a smart way to go that's why it is always good to have good credit 
because for instance say you have good credit and you are running low on cash you can now go and apply for a credit card which gives you a zero percent apr and with a zero percent apr means now you can now go and use that credit card and try to do something with that credit card invest it in something in where you can now make money from it because the credit cards give you certain incentives now i implore anybody credit cards always gives incentive try to reach those incentives because it is they're trying to get you to spend money but it is also free money so say for instance you open a credit card account and they say oh after you spend five thousand dollars they give you a hundred thousand pints a hundred thousand pints can be a thousand dollars so they're basically saying spend five thousand and you get an extra thousand if you have to call somebody and say hey you have any purchases you want to make give me the cash i pay the I, I i'll pay with my card if you going out and all your friends have cash and you guys are going to pay a bill at the club because that is what i did pay a bill at the club take the cash from everybody pay with your card reach those incentives because that is free money and they always only last for like 30 30 um for like 30 days or three months so you need to get get those incentives and and, and use them um book flights with your credit card um and then when you start when after you've developed good enough credit now smartest thing to do is now you go and you register an llc which i have um, you register an LLC, which is your business. I am a business, so my Instagram, my podcast, everything that I do encompasses and falls right under my LLC. So when you get an LLC, you now go and open a bank account. And after you open the bank account, you can now get a business credit card. No, a business credit card is separate and apart from your personal credit, although they will run your credit. To open that LLC so when you get a business credit now you can now you have more credit to invest in say like what I did I can invest in a camera the tripod the mic the condenser you know the TV so where I live um, for tax purposes I write off a certain amount in my rent if I am buying a TV, I can say that TV is a monitor. My couch, my living room is my office. And I have proof that it is my office because I use this space to work. Because what am I doing right now? I am working. And if you can write up a certain amount for lunch, now when you go and you buy gas, you just use your business credit card to buy gas. Now all of these things are going to, one, build your credit score build the score for your business and it is also the smartest way to go in terms of getting all the financial freedom and using all the perks of living in the states and having access to these to the wealth of credit that can be given to you to make yourself better so you're going to receive you're going to try to get a business credit card open a business bank account now the good thing with a business credit card is no if you are late on a business credit card payment it doesn't show up on your um credit card or your Experian or whatever you use to check your credit it doesn't show up until i think like um like two to three months after your statement so it is not going to necessarily be reported to your credit card that early so i always implore you guys to get an llc and run everything through your llc try to make sure that you're paying your bills your rent for instance even my car the car that i have now is under my llc um there are certain tax stipulations in which you can get certain leeway when filing taxes and also guys when you move here be prepared for taxes please file your taxes 
the aim is either to get back money or the aim is not to own. More than likely, if you are self-employed or a business person, your aim is to try to pay back as less as possible or to break even. So what I did is, so the car that I drive weighs a certain amount and I use it for business. Now, when I say for business, it takes me, say I want to shoot down at Santa Monica or in Malibu. I drive my car there, I carry my equipment in it, I use my car for business and once it is my business name, I now can file a certain amount is recoupable. Not necessarily like to get back in cash, but like as write-offs, I can get back a certain percentage of it via, um, so there is a thing called a sales tax. So I can get back a certain amount of the sales tax because of the weight and the type of car that I drive because it fits in a certain class. So I always implore you guys to try to get as much credit as possible and try to build credit. Now when I say as much credit as possible, I don't mean garbage credit. I mean good credit cards. Aim for an American Express card. Aim for the good credit cards, but also try to start a business and have a LLC in which now it is called a limited liability card or company for a reason. So when you have an LLC, which is a limited liability company, you don't necessarily, it is an entity of itself. So the, your liability is limited. So you can get credit cards, build, you can now get loans from that and you can use it. Get a certain percentage of your rent written off. You can, you know, you buy a laptop. You can write off a certain amount for the laptop, the computer, all my equipment. As I was speaking before, it was bought with a credit card. So don't be scared of getting credit. Don't listen to the naysayers as it relates to who must have credit and how long and don't get a car on payments and the chances are they had the opportunity to build credit and they failed miserably. You know, I don't know if it's because of some financial surprise or anything can cause somebody credit to go bad. So I am telling you guys to try and keep your a good credit score try and keep a good credit score the better the credit score is is the more money you are going to be able to borrow and this will also impact you trying to own a home in the long run because the better the credit score is the more the banks are going to feel comfortable with lending you a certain amount of money now all this relationship this credit building relationship takes time and credit is not built overnight but there are always ways and loopholes in which you can get a good credit score and just grow always grow because a credit can take you out of a situation and remember 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 first of all subscribe and like the video because i have to be catching you know I have to catch you when you listen properly. I have to catch you, so you have to subscribe. And also, I have some merch merchandise coming. Um, I have some shirts, hoodies, hats coming. You know, with different different phrases. So, you guys will see as soon as it is released. But the great credit now, see now credit can afford me to use a business credit card and go and purchase whatever material that I need to make these shirts, print these shirts, and I can sell them to you. And now I can either try to make back the amount of money to pay off the credit card. You see where I'm going? So it is always good to have it and never ignore it. Always try to file your taxes. Don't miss your taxes because that have a lot to
to do with even you getting becoming a citizen so you have to be very mindful of that uh preferably anybody who's building credit after you've established a good amount of personal credit focus on your business credit because that is the one that is the one what will change your outcome and your view on everything so remember get the car you want sometime you might have to put your heart where you cannot reach it to to get there to eventually see yourself there but you are going to regret if you don't try to avoid loosely taking things on credit like phone or furniture stuff like that you don't don't take those stuff on credit if you cannot buy them cash try find a way out offer up the furniture have the biggest depreciation value i've bought so much furniture and furniture is something when you move in you probably leave them behind so i wouldn't credit that i, I don't want that debt left um get a car that you see yourself driving for five years or if you see it as you are going to upgrade from this car to get to the car that you want because your first car might not necessarily be the car that you want but you have to establish a certain amount of credit and build a level of relationship with the creditor in order to get more money so the voice is real the reasoning is raw and people just comment the things they want to want me to talk about i understand that this is different but like it comment it is free thanks for listening big up on yourself i subscribe and like the video virgin